Hello, welcome to today's coding challenge. In today's coding challenge, I am going to attempt to program this, the Game of Life Cellular Automaton uh, in JavaScript, I'm going to use the P5.js framework. What's running right here right now is a processing example uh, using the Java programming language that I made several years ago as part of the Nature of Code book. Now, if you're interested in that, you can also look at my whole playlist about this thing that I can't pronounce called cellular automata, the plural of automaton. Um, and I do have some videos that give you some historical background and looking at different uh, Wolfram's elementary uh, CA and some exercises and things. But I'm really just showing examples and talking about the systems in, in those videos. And in this video, I'm going to try to just start from no code and finish with the simulation. Hopefully, it's going to work. <laughs> it generally doesn't, so don't get your hopes up. Um, but I, I do want to say that you, I, I would encourage you to do some background reading. Um, this is the first uh, sort of public um, appearance of the game, the game of life, uh, as, as created by John Conway, a mathematician, from an article in Scientific American in 1970 by Martin Gardner. Uh, of course, you can always refer to the Wikipedia page. I'm going to need this, which is it's going to, uh, which where it outlines the rules for how the system behaves. And you can also see that there's a lot of possible stuff. There's all these kinds of interesting repeating patterns and different types of things that you can create and do with the game of life simulation. But I'm going to program a simple version of it. Hopefully that will happen. Then at the end, I'll talk about some variations that you might think about, and maybe someday I'll even try to like make one in 3D or something like that. Okay, so let's get started. Um, here's what we need. A cellular automaton is a system of cells that exist in a grid. It could be in one dimension, two dimensions, three dimensions. The game of life system is one that exists in two dimensions. And the idea is that you have generations. So if this is generation zero, I'm going to run some computation on this system of cells on a grid, and then I'm going to have a new set of cells on that grid, and that's going to be generation one. So the cells that exist on that grid all have a state. That's part of a CA system. So that state could be a floating point number. It could be a kind of animal. <laughs> you could really imagine it in a lot of different ways. I'm going to do something very simple with the game of, the game of life is a simple system of discrete states, two states, zero or one, on or off, alive or dead. So you could imagine a configuration of this being something like this. And for each time, each tick, each generation, each frame of animation, I evaluate each cell one by one and get a new state based on the previous state. So let's say I'm trying to do this cell. I need this cell's new state. I'm going to get a new state based on this state and its neighbors. So what are its neighbors? That's up to us to define. It could be its left neighbor, its right neighbor. It's only its neighbors to its left. But in the game of life system, its neighborhood are the eight cells surrounding it. So it's this three by three area. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I need to evaluate all of those cells and decide whether it should stay as a zero or turn into a one. And the reason why it's called the game of life is the rules, the rules for how we move from one generation to another resemble some type of like biological process that you might think about population or bacterial growth. And the idea is that a cell that is surrounded by neighbors that aren't alive cannot stay alive. A cell surrounded by neighbors that are alive can, uh, can come to life or stay alive, and a cell that's surrounded by too many neighbors cannot stay alive due to overpopulation. And we can go back to the Wikipedia page and, and read those rules precisely right here. So any live cell with fewer than two neighbors dies as if caused by underpopulation. Any live cell with two or three neighbors lives onto the next generation. Any cell with more than three neighbors dies by overpopulation. And any dead cell with exactly three, three live neighbors becomes a live cell. So this is written as if by reproduction. So this is written in a somewhat of a confusing way. I think I could simplify this, I think. We could say like, let's say the cell is dead. It's a zero. It's only going to change to a one if it has three live neighbors. Then it changes to a one. Otherwise, it stays a zero. A one is going to stay a one unless it has 
less than two, less than two live, and greater than three live. Then it dies. So it so birth reproduction happens with exactly three neighbors. Death happens with fewer than two or greater than three. Now, I don't know if I got those numbers right. Let's go check the Wikipedia page again. Ah! Thank you, thank you. I, this video, I hit the sound effect by accident. Apologies for that. Um, live cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies. Yes, less than two dies. Live cell with two or three neighbors lives. I don't care about that. I'm not gonna kind of not care about change. Then it stays the same. I can kind of ignore that. Live cell with more than three neighbors dies. Yep, that's what I've got over there. And then any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes alive. Okay, so I've got those rules correct. So now, oh, what do I need? Hello, you're over there. I'm gonna go back over here. I need something. I need a data, all I need to make this program work is a data structure to store this grid. And this is where I'm kind of having like a bit of a headache and I'm really not sure what to do. The way that I've always done this in previous examples is by using something called a two-dimensional array. And I think I have a video tutorial about that somewhere, which I will link to in this video's description. But two-dimensional arrays are kind of not so much fun in JavaScript, they can become a little bit weird. And there really is no such thing as a two-dimensional array. A two-dimensional array is a construct of our own human mind saying like it's really just an array of arrays, which makes sense. This is an array, you know, each row is an array and then the grid is an array of rows or each column is an array and the grid is an array of columns. So I think I'm gonna do it that way with the two-dimensional array. I just should say that it's a little bit awkward two-dimensional arrays in JavaScript but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead anyway. So the first thing that I wanna do in this program is just make a two-dimensional array that stores a random collection of zeros and ones. So let's go do that. So I'm gonna go to the code, and you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna actually just write a function. I swear, I'm having like weird deja vu. I probably did this in another video somewhere. I'm gonna just write a function called make 2D array, and I want a certain number of columns and rows. Okay, because that way I can just say, I can have a global variable called the grid. I'll call it grid. And I could just say grid equals make 2D array. And I could say I want a 10 by 10 grid. So this is kind of what I want to do. I'm going to just farm out the making of the array to another function. And oh, I, now I do remember doing this. Because I'm going to write this in a kind of, oh, there's a whole like coding challenge or video. I'm going to do this in a kind of horrific way. And then everyone's going to like, give me all these like amazing ES6 JavaScript fancy ways of doing this whole fu function in like one line of code. Someday I'll come back and do that. Okay, so now, um, so now let me see here. So what I need to do is first is I need to have some sort of array and it's going to be, it's going, this is always where I get confused too. Do I want the columns the point of using a 2D array is that eventually at some point I'm going to be able to say something like grid, you know, index 2, index 3. And I guess I usually think of this as X and Y and X being the columns. So I want this, the outer array, if I'm thinking about arrays of arrays, to be every single column. Every single, no, no, that's what, X is column, right? And then the Y is every single row. Okay. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to make a new array of columns and then I am going to say for let i equal zero, i is less than that array dot length, i plus plus, make a uh, array index i is a new array of rows. Again, I know there are all sorts of shorter and fancier automatic functions for generating and configuring arrays like fill and map and reduce and all that kind of stuff, um, even more. Um, so I'm going to do this, and then I am going to, what I want to do here now is I also want to fill them with, uh, I guess I could fill it with values down here. Um, so I'm... So maybe I won't, maybe I'll actually just do that. So this is going to make me an empty 2D array with nothing in it. And then I think what I want is, I, th I probably want to have these global variables. I know this is a little bit goofy that I'm doing this. 
Uh, and then what I'm going to do, I could make an op. And I'm going to say, let i equal 0, i is less than uh, columns i plus plus. And then I'm going to do j is less than 0, j is less than rows. I'm going to do a nested loop so that I can say grid i j equals floor random 2. This is going to, uh, this is going to give me a nested loop. This is a nested loop. So I make the sort of like 2D array structure that's empty, and then I iterate over every single column and every single row, and I fill each one with a random number, 0 or 1. Um, and I'm just, now I'm going to run this, and I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go to my code. Ooh, okay, cannot read property 0 of undefined. Well, you know what would be nice? if I actually return that array. <laughs> so they make 2D a function array. It, it's making this array, it's also got to return it so that I can get it back here. And then now if I look at grid, I'm going to see it's an array of arrays. And I forgot, there's this wonderful thing you can do, like console.table grid, which shows me, now I can see it here. So we can see this is that two-dimensional array, that's what it looks like. It's a two-dimensional array with rows and columns filled with zeros and ones. So, step one is finished. Now what I need to do is I need some mechanism to every frame of animation iterate over every single spot and set a new spot. Actually, you know what I should do first? I need to render this thing. I want to be able to see it as a grid of red and blue squares, or black and white squares, or zeros and ones on the screen. There's any number of ways you could render this. I'm going to do it in the traditional way of a grid. The square, the cell of the grid, is black at the value of zero, is white at the value of one, or vice versa. Okay, what I want to do now is I'm going to add a draw function. And I'm, I'm going to be using this loop over and over again. I'm going to add this loop. Right, because I'm always going to, anytime I want to like look at everything, I'm going to go through all the columns and all the rows. Um, it's been pointed out in the chat that there are some um, JavaScript libraries and packages that manage grid systems and neighbors for you. It would be great to use those. I'm going to just do it all without that right now, just to kind of like figure it out. Um, I'm going to say uh, background uh, zero, and uh, I'm going to create a canvas. I think to make my life easier for the moment, I'm going to make the canvas also a square. And then what I need to do is I need to draw, I want to draw a rectangle at an x and a y with some width and height. And it's going to, they're going to be squares, so some width and width. <laughs> um, and that value is going to be the width of the, um, you know, I should probably calculate the number of columns and rows. Here's the thing, I'm going to redo the way that I'm doing this. So I'm not going to actually have a fixed number of columns and rows. I'm actually going to do like a scale, or I'm going to just actually have a variable called resolution. And I'm going to say that's 10, or 40. I'm going to say that's 40, so that'll be 10 by 10. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, columns equals the width of the canvas divided by resolution. Rows equals the height of the can canvas divided by resolution. Um, this way I can kind of dynamically, you'll see what I, I can dynamically make a 2D array based on how big I want the squares to be. So the columns and rows are being calculated based on how big I want the squares to be and the canvas size. And then I have that global variable resolution, which is probably too long of a name, which I can just use down here. And now x equals i times resolution and y equals j times resolution and I'm going to now say if grid i j equals 1, fill 255. And you know what? Since I made the background 0, I can actually, in this case, I can just draw rec white rectangles only for the values of 1. So let's see. I probably got something wrong here, but let's try to run this. No, I didn't. So we can see, there we go. Now nah, there's some goofiness, like, oh, it's sort of like my math is a little off, and I, what's this weird, like, nonsense over here, uh, flickering. Um, I kind of feel the need to fix that. Um, and the other thing that I can do that this is going to help is if I make this 600 by 400, 
and I make this like 20, right, it still works. And now, this is driving me crazy. I think what I want to do is it's, there's a sort of issue with the stroke. So I could say, I could also say stroke 255, and then I'm getting something like this. But I don't know, design-wise, I'm not going to worry about that too much. Actually, I kind of like being able to see the grid. <laughs> so let me actually put in stroke zero, and then I'm going to do something kind of goofy, which is I think if I say just draw the, all the rectangles like one pixel less, whoops, I think I'm going to get the look that I want. Yeah. So whatever, there's countless ways I could deal with this, but now I have, I have the grid, I have all the cells. So now it's up to me to simply implement these rules. I need to, for every single cell, count the number of live neighbors, look at its own state, and have these rules play out. Here's the thing, this is really important. While I'm checking each cell, I check this cell first, let's say. I cannot change its value and then go on and check the next cell because the next cell's new state should not be dependent on this cell's new state but its previous state and if I've changed its state, I've lost its old state. So this is where what I actually need is I need two two-dimensional arrays. One is the sort of old one and one is the new one. Now probably the simplest thing for me to do is just make a new one every frame um, that's sort of like in some ways a bad idea in terms of memory management. And if you look at my processing example that I referenced at the beginning of this video, what I actually do in that example is I just have two different arrays. I have an old one and then I have a new one. Then the new one is then the old one and I write the new one over here. I just keep swapping them. So I could maybe add that in at some point during this video. But for right now, at the beginning of draw, I'm just always going to make a new generation. At the beginning, what I could do here... Why does that keep happening? when I press the button to change the camera. Uh, at the beginning of draw, I can say let next for next generation equal uh, make 2D array, columns and rows. Okay, now I'm gonna leave this here for the rendering and what I'm actually gonna do is at the end, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, uh, I guess, it doesn't really matter. Do I want to like render first? This is kind of like a philosophical, deep philosophical question. Do I want to compute and then render or render and then compute? Kind of could matter in some situations. This in this situation doesn't really matter. But what I, what I, the reason why is like I'm never going to see the first generation because what I want to do is say grid equals next. So basically the algorithm here is compute next based on grid because draw is looping. So I want to compute the next generation based on the grid, make grid that, render, and then compute the next generation based on grid, make grid that, render. So I don't know, now it's bothering me. <laughs> I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this after. So at least I draw the first one and I'm going to do some computation for the next frame. Okay, okay. So now, what do I need to do once again? Loop through all of these. Loop through all of these. Now what I need to do is count live neighbors. I need to count the number of live neighbors, the neighbors that have one. So I could do a kind of internal loop here, and that would probably be a smart thing to do. Maybe I will do that, um, where basically what I do is I say I have a certain uh, I'm at a certain cell. Let me look at the cells between negative one and one and negative one and one offset from where I am. I could also just do something really silly like, let me do the really silly thing first. I could say let sum equal zero. Then I could say sum plus equal grid i minus one j. That would be the neighbor to the, so, <laughs> right? If this is i comma j, i minus 1 comma j is there, i minus 1, j minus 1, i, j minus 1, that sort of thing. So if I'm thinking about this, I might like add, go, I could like manually put in all the neighbors. Just like add them all up. <laughs> like, this is like, I'm kind of going around the horn here, right? Um, plus uh, i plus 1, j plus 1. Um, 
Um, I sometimes I like doing ridiculous things like this just to figure this stuff out. Um, now I gotta go uh, i minus one, j plus one, and then what's the last one? i minus one, j. This should be eight neighbors. And I right? This is eight neighbors. One, two, three, four. Oh wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What did I forget? <laughs> I minus one, j minus one. I, j minus one. I plus one, j minus one. I forgot to do that whole top row. And then I plus one, j. I plus one, j plus one, I. Yeah, so this should now be eight. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, I kind of hate that I did this. <laughs> you're all like throwing your tomatoes at your television screen because of course you're all watching this on a television screen. Um, so this is the idea. I need to add up all those neighbors. Let's do this in a loop. So another way I could do it is I could say, ah, you, I have a better idea. Let's, neighbors, I have a better idea. Let's write a function to do this. Neighbors equals count. I'm going to give it the grid and I'm going to give it the i and the j. So I'm going to write a function. I'll put it all the way at the bottom of my code that receives, uh, I'm going to call it count, account neighbors, let's call it. And it's going to receive a some 2D array and it's going to receive an x and a y location. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, i equals negative 1, i is less than 2, i plus plus. Then, so I'm going to do a little nested loop using i and j around that spot. And I'm going to say let sum equals 0, and then I'm going to say sum plus equals grid i j. However, here's a problem. I don't want to count myself as a neighbor. So there's a few different ways I could do this, but it's a little bit silly. I'm just going to like subtract it at the end. <laughs> like I'll just subtract it out. I could have like put an if statement here, like ignore it if i equals x and j equals x, but I'm just going to subtract it out at the end. And then I'm going to return that sum. So this is, you could see like a couple different ways of doing this right now. Um, this is one way to kind of do this. What this is doing is it's saying, let me do a little loop around here, negative one, zero, positive one, negative one, zero, positive one. So let me check this, 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 and then subtract this out because I don't really want to count that one. Okay, so now I should be able to, I'm going to just delete this. I've now counted all of the neighbors. Ah, I've got a big problem. What do I do with the fact that if I'm on the edge, there's no neighbor to the left? If I'm on the bottom, there's no neighbor below. If I'm on the top, there's no neighbor to the above. If I'm on the right, there's no neighbor. If I'm on the edge, there's no neighbor to the right. So what I could do, there's a bunch of things I could do. I could consider this like an infinite wraparound world where like this neighbor to the right is this, this neighbor to the left is this. Um, I could, there's other ways that I could approach it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the edges as fixed values and just not bother to check them. <laughs> Which is, I, so what I'm going to do here is I am going to, um, hmm, I wanted to do like, I was going to do this loop like this. You know what? Let's do the wraparound. Do I dare? No, no, no. Let's do it the simple way first. <laughs> I was like, let me just add the wraparound code because I could add the wraparound code here. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna, let me, I'll, maybe I'll leave that as an exercise or do that later. So the, the, the issue is, you know what I really want? I think then what I want, the problem is if I change this loop, so I have, to, I have to treat the edges differently. Oh, so much, so much heartache here. But I, I can say what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, oh, this is the drawing. Whoa. All oh, right, this is the compu computation. So I'm going to say if i equals 0 or i equals columns minus 1, uh, minus one or j e equals zero or <laughs> j equals rows minus one. These are this is like all of the edges. I'm just going to treat them differently. 
I'm going to say next i j equals uh, grid i j. So I'm just going to keep the same values from before. This is not a great solution, but it's a quick one that I can do right now. So I'm, if I'm on an edge, I'm just going to use the same value. Because now what I can do is say, look at this, my state is grid i j. Now it's time for me to implement those rules, right? Okay, if my state is zero and three neighbors are alive, change my state to one. If state equals zero and neighbors equals zero, then next i j equals one. Okay, that's rule number one. If uh, not, 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 not zero equals three. Okay, now what else? If I'm alive and less than two or greater than three are alive, then change my state to zero. Else, if my state is one and neighbors is less than two or neighbors is greater than three, and I probably should put a little parentheses around that one, and again, I'm sure there are like some nicer ways I could write this in a more concise way, but you can see this is the rule, right? If I'm alive and I have less than two or greater than three neighbors, then the new state is zero. In all other cases, the next state is just the current, is just the current state. Okay, so and I, this makes me want to put this up here at the top so that I can also just use this here. So that's the state, right? The state, this is the current state. If I'm an edge, eh, just ignore me, I'm the same state. If I'm not an edge, count all the neighbors, check if I should change my state or say the same. I'm seeing in the chat there's a typo at neighbors in the first if. Thank you. Neighbors. Okay. What's the chance I've actually finished this? <laughs> so there we go. I think I have mostly all the code for it. Ah, uh, okay, count is not defined. Sketch.js line 55. Uh, oh, right, because I called it count neighbors, which is a better name for the function than count. Let's try that. Cannot read property negative one of undefined at count neighbors. So what is undefined? Oh, no, 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 ah, look at this. This is a big mistake, right? What was I doing here? This loop, negative, right, this loop which goes, um, which is basically a loop for like a little subsection, right, if this is x and y, right, i is an offset negative one to positive one, j is an offset negative one to positive one. The cells I'm looking at are not i, j, but x plus i and y plus j, because I'm, I'm just looking relative to where that x, y point is. So that was a big mistake here. This should be x plus i, y plus j. <laughs> oh, so close. Count neighbors at draw sketch line 55. OK, ooh, sketch line 55. Count neighbors. Wait, wait, wait. Cannot read property negative 1 of undefined. What's undefined? Grid? Neighbors? Hmm. Okay, hold on. Let's look at some stuff here. Or if J is your oh, look at this. I just keep going anyway. So this I really I need to break out of the loop. So this is really like I'm done. Leave the loop or continue or something. I don't know. I'm gonna um, I'm just gonna put an else in here. As much as I hate that. So, because I shouldn't be, I'm basically doing the edges or the neighbors. Boy, this will be much nicer if I just, in this function, add some code to deal with wraparound, which is not going to be that hard to do. Um, so, but now it should be good. There we go, the game of life. Now, it looks weird because <laughs> the edges aren't ever changing, but this is actually now the game of life working. I really got to implement this wraparound thing. So let's do that now. Let's fix it so that the edges consider the other sides as neighbors. So how do I do that? 
Well, one way to do that is with something called modulus. This is really, this is great. And I can refer you to Golan Levin's guest tutorial video on modulus, which was made as part of this channel, so I will link to that. But basically, what I'm saying here is if I have 10 columns, 0 through 9, what could, and I'm always looking for the neighbor plus 1, right? So 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 9 plus 1 is 10, but I want the neighbor to be 0. Well, guess what? 9 plus 1 modulus 10 equals 0, because modulus is the operator that gives you the remainder of division. 10 divided by 10 is 1 remainder 0. So I encourage you to watch that modulus video if you're not familiar with modulus. So this will actually work almost getting closer if I say, I'm going to just say like, I'm going to have a new, I need like a new variable name for x plus i. I guess I could say column. I don't, I don't like column. And I'm going to say x plus i modulus columns. And row equals y plus j modulus rows. So this gets me close. It doesn't get me all the way there but it gets me close. So now I'm adding it up like this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of this whole edges thing because no longer, okay? So I'm going to get this done. Now I'm going to have an error here, right? I'm still getting like an out of bounds error because I'm going to negative one. Why? Because what if in the case of i equal negative one? So what is, if, if if i is 0, right, so let me come to the console here. 10 modulus 10 is 0. But let's say I'm looking for the left neighbors. So I'm going through negative 1. Negative 1 modulus 10 is negative 1. But I need that to be 9. I need negative 1 to be 9. Well, guess what? If I actually just add the number of columns to everything, right? If I'm actually working with the numbers, instead of the numbers 0 through 9, the numbers 10 through 19, right? 10 minus 1 is 9, modulus 10 is 9. So the formula is, is negative 1 is negative 1 plus the number of columns, modulus the number of columns. Oh, but the, that's not 10. There's a different numbers in my system. But so let's, let's try to confirm this again, okay? The idea is that I have an x and a y point. So that point might be, let's say if it's on an edge, for example, might be like 0, comma, uh, it's on the left edge, might be something like 0, comma, whatever the y is. You know, 10, 5. So this is the x value. And I want to take x plus i plus the number of columns modulus the number of columns. I said this is going to be simple, but it's kind of, it's really kind of like a crazy thing to do. But you might write this out and practice it a bit on your own. I, I, it will make sense to you eventually. So when this is going to work, basically, let's say i is going to be the values uh, negative 1, 0, and 1, right? x is going to be the values 0 through 9 if I'm thinking about all the possible, all the possible columns. So let's just take 0 and negative 1, for example. 0 minus 1 plus, and in this case I have 10 columns, plus 10 modulus 10 is actually 9 modulus 10, which equals 9. So 0, negative 1 to the left of it, that wraps it around to get the neighbor on the right. Right? Does it work for just any arbitrary thing in the middle? Like if I take uh, i to be 3, sorry, if I take, if I take sorry, um, x to be 3, 3 minus 1 plus 10 modulus 10. Well, see how this 10 and 10, it kind of cancels itself out. Can you see that? Am I off the whiteboard? I'm close to being off the whiteboard. That equals 2, right? Because this is 12 modulus 10 is 2. So this actually works. And then what if I'm on the edge, if I'm at like 9, right? If x is 9, 9 plus 1 
is 10, plus the number of columns is 10 is 20, modulus columns, 20 divided by 10 is 2, remainder 0, 0. So 9 to the right gets its neighbor 0. So this is kind of goofy, it like shifts everything over so it can kind of look across the edges. So I'm, this is going to work. <laughs> you can believe me or not believe me, but it's going to work. And I'm going to uh, put this in. So now what I want is x plus i plus columns, modulus columns, y plus j plus rows, modulus jo rows, add those all up, and the game of life. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for watching this coding challenge. Thank you, thank you. So let's try making, let's try doing a couple things um, just to get a little further here. Let's, um, let's, um, I don't know. No, I'm not going to do, you, you do all the next stuff. <laughs> um, I'm just curious, like, let me make the resolution 10. So we can see that's with a 10. So you can see it's running pretty fast in the browser. I have a pretty slow, uh, low resolution. Um, so here's what you should do now. I'm going to stop. This is a perfect opportunity for people watching this video to make some variations. Some things you can think about. Well, one thing is, what if you make each one of these cells an object? So its state might not actually just be, it can keep track of more than just its state zero or one. It could keep track of whether it's changed state or stayed the same or how long it stayed the same. What if you visualize those, what if you visualize with different colors based on the history of the system? What if you allow a user to draw with the mouse and set cells on? What if you look up some of these repeating, special repeating patterns that you can create certain kinds of patterns? What if you, um, I, I, you're going to think of more, and what if you did the edges in a different way? What if you used the floating point numbers instead of zeros and ones and did like an average or something? There are so many ways you can create a system, lowering the resolution. What if you drew, didn't draw squares, but circles, used images? How can you visualize this system? How can you change the rules? Or how can you visualize the system in a different way to create a piece of art or for some other purpose? I look forward to you. Share what you make in the comments. There'll be the code link from here in a readme where you can submit your versions. And I'll come back in a future live stream. I'll share some of the community-made versions. Run this again. Um, there's one other thing. Ah, but I do think that making cell objects is a path. Right, right now I just have... Oh, and, and you should probably do the swapping thing. Like, ah, eh, maybe, maybe that's one other thing you could do is like, you really, maybe not, don't make a new 2D array every time. But what I'm thinking about here is what if instead of each one of these being a random value, you said something like new cell i comma j. And this cell object can, can animate, it can move around, the cells could move, they could grow, they could shrink, they could keep track of their history. There's so many possibilities there if you make an object for the cell. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this coding challenge and you share with me what you make. Goodbye.